Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Hakuna La Planta. My name is Kevin and today is a plant tour video. There's a lot in this video, air layering again, watering my plants in soil and pond, some worm casting, fertilization situations. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Good morning guys, it is Saturday morning and we have a lot to do today. So let's start off with the Philodendron Glorious. I need to stake her up because first of all, let's just show her. Look at these leaves. Like, she's a beast. Look at these roots. <coughs> she's pushing on a new leaf, guys. Look at this beauty. And because I didn't anticipate it growing so quickly, I only put the stake up to here, and now she's just like so tall. So we're just gonna extend it. I'm just going to zip tie a few more bamboo stakes to the existing one. And yeah, we'll just see what happens. Okay, so I'm just gonna zip tie these bamboo stakes with these zip ties. So I just put them together and I've just zip tied it together. You probably put zip ties at two more sections. So the middle and then just at the top end here. So here's the existing one, future Kevin zoom in. The existing one is on this side. And so I'm just going to zip tie um, where was I? I'm just gonna <laughs> zip tie them together. So I'm just tying some plant tape around them. Then I'm just going to zip tie them together and I try to really tighten them a lot. Second one in the middle and then... Okay, so I'm going to just put three because uh, it feels pretty stable. I know I could have technically taken out the existing one and just put this new one, but I've just had situations where I've taken um, the existing stake and the roots have been um, ripped out and then there was some rot. It was a whole nightmare. So just to be safe and also because this um, plant is putting out a new leaf, I'm just gonna do this for now. And yeah, from there, I'm going to tie it. Oh my god, I'm just gonna break this plant. Do you know what, guys? I think I'm gonna air layer her. I think that's a good idea. Um, it'll offer more support for the plant because the aerial roots over here are so... Um, they're kind of at the point where they, where they will root easy. Usually when the aerial roots are newer, they tend to put out roots if a medium or like in the event of air layering, the moss is there. So I'm just securing things. The plant tape. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some moss. And so like the air layering of my philodendron plowmanii, I'm going to take a Ziploc, cut the end off so you have a tunnel situation. And I'm just going to thread it through this new leaf carefully. And so as you can see, we're left with empty space here. It's a little bit different um, than, you know, the horizontal terrestrial air layering, but I just take these ends and kind of wrap it around the stake. Then I'm just wrapping the bottom here with plant tape. Try your best to go as tight as possible without suffocating the plant, I guess. Choking it, I don't know. Then you'll grab your moss over here and just pack it in. Obviously your goal is to cover um, the majority of the aerial roots and so they have the opportunity to root in the moss. But I find that when they're in a Ziploc uh, and it's zipped up, um, they do have enough moisture to push out roots even though they're not in contact with the moss. And yeah. Um, I guess that's all I'm going to put for now. I'm probably gonna put more as more roots grow. And so we're just closing the zip block. And I'm just wrapping to kind of support it. Okay, so just some tape to kind of support it against the stake here. Maybe I'll add another one here. And yeah, so again, I just feel through the bag to see if it's moist and that's how I gauge how to water it. Um, usually when I use the Ziploc method, um, as opposed to the cling wrap method, it stays pretty moist. So I don't need to, um, 
water it often. And so as a plant grows, I'm just going to keep air layering at each node, uh, just so when the time comes to propagate, um, the plant will have already a substantial root system, so it can easily acclimate uh, to a new medium once it's chopped. And while I'm on the ground here next to my plants and soil, I'm going to water them just because it's been a little bit. Um, but also I'm going to put the pot popper, which is the beneficial nematodes, just because ever since <laughs> it was kind of a mistake, ever since I transferred my plants to soil, I've had just this huge fungus gnat issue. I don't necessarily want to give advice uh, because I obviously haven't solved it, but honestly, guys, I think it's working. I don't know if you could see, but there's a ton of like yellow traps here. <laughs> so yeah, let's go a little bit closer. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, so there's actually a lot more that I'm gonna do with my plants and soil. Um, I just remembered that the last time I fertilized my plants and soil was in November, which was two months ago. Usually what I do is I do a top coating of worm castings. My personal opinion about fertilizing during the winter, because it is January, is that you should do it as long as you're giving your plants all the other things it needs, like light, warmth, humidity. My philodendron glorious is an example of that. It's still growing huge leaves. And also this is one of my Monstera albos. Look at that, new leaf. So it's obviously going to depend based on your environment. But yeah, your plants can still grow large, luscious growth during the winter. And so you should fertilize appropriately. Um, so speaking of the elbow, this is a big deal because the last leaf terminated itself. <laughs> and now guys, oh. okay, look at the other side because you could see the fenestrations. <laughs> oh my God. And she took a little bit of a while, but you could see that final, oops, Finally, it's stuck to the roots. You know, she's put out a bunch of roots. And to my point about the fungus gnat issue, I put these in the pots in October. And ever since I started doing the, the nematodes, that's all, that's all. So here it is. I'll put a link in my description on Amazon. And um, they come in these little sacks. I bought a pack of 50, I think. You just need to put this into the soil. Um, then they ask you to water over it and um, they just hang out. So I'm gonna put that on my elbow right now. I don't measure how much worm castings I put in. I just kind of sprinkle throughout the circumference of the pot. Take my watering thing. <laughs> it looks like a wand. <laughs> I'm just water, you can't see it, but I'm just watering the pot. So the second elbow doesn't need to be watered, um, but I'm just going to put the nematodes on top, add a little bit of water just so the surface is a bit moist. And yeah, guys, it pushed out this leaf. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, this was a single node cutting, if y'all forgot, and it pushed out this leaf. Again, the gnat issue is pretty controlled. Um, there's only a few here. Oh my God. Did y'all see that? Was my butt in the way? <laughs> Guys, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> this Thai constellation bed. Oh, and I just watered it. But do you know what? I think this is a good opportunity to look at the roots. So let's do that now. Okay, here we go. Okay guys, we are here. Let's go take a look. So I didn't even explain why I'm doing this. This Thai constellation has not done a thing. And I'm pretty sure I propagated this tie at the end of the summer. So although the roots are there and they look healthy, um, I just want to see what's going on underneath, right? Is that the right decision? Okay, we're doing it. Oh, There is a growth point. Okay, based on what I'm seeing here, because I just moved the dirt, I finally found this growth point. There were like a couple things of um, pumice on top. So you could see that it's flattened a little bit, but I mean, she looks fine. Yeah, cause I was confused. Like the roots look fine um, and it was in a chunky mix. So I was so confused. Okay, this one is just really slow then, I guess. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some worm castings and then I'll put 
the soil on top. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that tie sit in the sink for a little bit. Let's go back into the bedroom and resume what we were doing. I'm just cleaning up <laughs> all this mess here. It wouldn't be a plant tour video without spilling something. This time it's soil. Okay, moving on. Philodendron Jose Bono. Um, she pushed out a leaf that died off and now she has this beautiful one. So again, pot popper in here. Some worm castings and just some water. <laughs> Struggle to put the leaf back against the window. I just realized I wasn't talking, but I'm dealing with my philodendron strawberry shake here. Um, there's a petiole that's stuck. The strawberry shake is kind of similar to the pink princess when it comes to petioles being stuck. I don't know if you could see it. Like this is one of the first times I'm seeing it. So I just, I ripped off the sheath because I had no freaking patience for it. And then I just sprayed some water and then this is a nightmare. I'm just going to pull it downwards and yes, ma'am. Okay. It's out. There's another one here. I put some water. Okay, we're just gonna let it hang out like that. So this strawberry shake has the plants that were the least variegated. It has pushed out a few points where it has a bunch of irrigation there. I know this is getting boring, so I'll just speed through the rest. So Thai Constellation, um, some amazing roots over here. Second Thai constellation. Oh, there's dirt everywhere. Oh my God. This is so chaotic. I'm sorry, y'all. Wow, this third one, first of all, half moon. She, I just found her against the grow light. So she's a little faded um, or bleached, but these roots are so healthy guys. Oh my gosh. So yeah, guys, I'm not going to bore you because I have to do this with all my plants and soil um, because I, to be honest, have neglected a lot of them. Um, so the Jose Bonos um, and and um, so, yeah, I'll just rejoin you guys when I do the next thing. Good morning. <laughs> it is a new day. I feel great. Um, we're just going to take a look around to see specifically what plants that are growing on either planks, stakes, trellises. And I'm just gonna see if I need to um, tie them down. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Hoyas. So um, there are a few methods I use. So I use these, I don't know what they're called. They look like hair clips, but I'm sure this can't hold hair. So they're, ooh. So we have the Hoya multiflora here. So I'm just going to, I guess, tie this or like clamp this down, is clamp the word, with the clip. And I find when the plant is younger, um, it's a lot easier for you to kind of bend um, a stem or tendril. And I think, cause the second plant here needs it as well. Yes, there we go. Okay, so that's one. That one was simple because it's smaller. Okay, so now the Hoya cutest porcelana. You could see that she has all these tendrils. I have neglected this plant a lot, but she's okay. I mean, she looks fine, right? So I'm just gonna sit it on my lap and we are just going to tie these tendrils down. When it comes to tying down the tendrils, I don't really follow a pattern. Hoyas are very resilient and they're amazing. Once you tie down a tendril, they push out um, growth at another node or section. And um, so 
I, do, I never worry. And when you do that, it ultimately results in a fuller plant. There are a few times when you tie the tendril down, that part of the tendril that's training downwards will just dry up and die. But in exchange, there's another one that's pushing out leaves below that point. And yeah, guys, I am excited and kind of worried because I know I haven't fertilized this plant in a while, but there are peduncles and this is one Hoya that I really want to bloom right over there. That's one. And there's another one. God, the second one is right here, guys. I don't know if you could see, but whoa. And yeah, here's an example of like a tendril that was growing. Um, I think it might have got too close to the grow light. So you could see that this is dry. I don't know if you could see, but there is a new growth point coming from the top. Um, so that's an example like the, uh, the new growth point will, will either come through the top um, or another part in the plant. Okay, so I think that's pretty much done. Oh my gosh, look at you. And before I forget, because I see peduncles, and this is just my method, um, every time I see peduncles, I just know that the plant needs more supplemental nutrients um, for the plant to sustain the blooms. When plants are getting ready to bloom, they need more energy, they need more nutrients, they need more light. So I just take, I don't even dilute it. <laughs> I just take um, my nutrient solution uh, that I use for my LECA plants and I just put a little bit. And I don't do this every watering. I do it like every other watering. So the next time I water this plant, when I see that the reservoir is low, I just do normal tap water. It's worked for me. I know a lot of people don't recommend like too strong of a nutrient solution, but I mean, she's doing okay. And this is exactly what I've been doing with this plant. And I'm doing this, oh my God, I'm spilling water. No, my sock. But yeah, I do this because she's in pawn. Um, I know, I don't remember when, I think it was the summertime I potted this plant in pond and I haven't like changed the substrate at all. So the slow release fertilizer that came with it, um, it's done. So yeah, I've just been using my nutrient solution, um, my leftover nutrient solution. So yeah, again, I try to just have it at the halfway mark. Um, just so I don't like over water her. Okay, this one is like tendrils everywhere. <laughs> and yeah, for this one, same idea. Just putting these clips around this trellis situation. Okay, I think that's good. And I guess the second method I use is my Hoya Carii albomarginata. So when it comes to plants with more succ succulent type stems or thicker stems, um, they become harder to bend and you'll notice if you try to bend them too much they um, secrete a sap from that breaking point or that bend. So in this case I use you know the plant tape the velcro tape and I don't tie it too tight and the key is finding a good balance between offering support but not tying it too tight that you're like gonna kill the plant. So you could see that I've gradually as this plant grew put uh, plant tape um, and every time for example at the top here I'm not going to tie it down too much I'm probably just gonna guide it with the plant tape does that make sense and then through time I'll tighten it gradually as like the days go by or the weeks go by and actually this doesn't need to be tied down but <laughs> I guess I just want to show her off she is a beauty look at her Okay, I just put a splash of nutrient solution in this one. And a side note, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I have decided this winter, I will not be using a humidifier. I personally hate humidifiers. And so it's a cold day today. I think it's about like 20 or feels like negative 20 degrees Celsius today, which is, I think it's negative four degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I, so the heat is running and <laughs> Although like the temperature is fine, the humidity 27, and you could see it's it it's gone as low as 23%, probably during like the nighttime. It's kind of been like this for the past two months, and my plants have been fine except for my anthuriums. So I mean humidity important, yes, but not the most important thing. Okay, so 
moving on, I forgot, this is another method I use. So this is my Epipremnum Panatum Alvo Variegata. Um, I showed her recently, but you could see that she's maturing. The leaves at the top here, guys, are you kidding? Oh my gosh, I'm so sad because I don't want to cut her, but like she's reached the top of this plank. This Coco Coyer plank is um, something I've made. It's two bamboo stakes on each side. It's a Coco Coyer uh, roll situation. And then I basically just zip tied it against this netting over here. This is just an idea I had um, and in some cases it works and some cases it doesn't so in this case it worked like you could see that for example this root is like in the coco coir like you can't even move it <laughs> so same idea i just from time to time look at this plant see if it needs any tying down just so the roots know that there's something against the plant and yeah you could see that near the bottom middle of the plank i had to help it a lot with these zip ties but at the top because it was maturing i didn't need to use a lot oh my god okay this one it doesn't have a lot of variegation but it's like the most variegation with fenestrations guys oh my gosh so she made her way to the back of the plank <laughs> so i just take one of these zip ties so future kevin zoom in um i put the zip tie through the other side of the plank and i just used force i just pushed it through um, and then i'm gonna take this end and i'm just gonna loop it around and i'm just tightening it slightly guys do not tight too tight um, especially with zip ties because they can be more aggressive when it comes to making them tight does that make sense <laughs> but in this case with this um, plant over here she's up right against the plank so the plant knows that it has support and it's evident in the leaf that it pushed out. Um, it's the first one of that plant to have a fenestration over here. I should stop touching it. And another thing I've noticed is that a lot of my air layering situations, uh, the moss is a little dry. So I'll just show you how I rehydrate them. I don't know if that's boring, but we're gonna do it. So update for my last plant tour video. Look at this leaf, my Philodendron Plowmanii. Oh, look at her. So in the last um, plant tour video, I air layered the um, end part of the plant. And you could see that the moss down here is still moist, um, but the top part, I don't know if y'all can hear. Do you hear that dryness of the moss? So the top part here is dry. For obvious reasons, um, it's exposed to air. But when I put my finger in and feel over here, it's still pretty moist. So what I like to do, because once moss is dry, like bone dry, it is incredibly annoying to rehydrate it uh, properly. I try to rehydrate them um, before it gets to that point. So we're gonna do that now. And so I like using my water pump thing and just spraying on the surface. And then you could see the water trickle down here. Okay, so that one's good. And the second one I noticed was my Monstera Albo. So I'm not gonna move her because it's a whole situation. There's a lot of things in front of her, um, but um, I've mentioned before that I've been air layering as a plant grows at every um, node, air, every time I see new aerial roots. Look at that root right in the center. Uh, I'm going to propagate this plant soon. So yeah, I put my finger in, I feel she's actually okay, but like I said, I don't want it to dry out completely. And yeah, I'm actually surprised because I think the last time I hydrated this was two weeks ago and she's still pretty moist in there. This aerial root, on the other hand, when I put my finger in, she is dry, she is dry. So yeah, I'm just using this again. I like this because you could just put it, the nozzle in the bag and just kind of move it around. So obviously my Ziploc method won't work all the time. So in this case, all the other nodes down here are um, wrapped with cling wrap. So I've poked holes and just so I could feel inside and then it, I could use that hole to hydrate the moss again. So this one isn't that dry either, but again, gotta stay ahead of, you know, the drynesses. And yeah, we're just gonna keep going down and feeling and watering and it's a whole thing.
Okay guys, so now I'm going to be watering my plants in pond, um, but it, when I don't have time on the weekends to water my plants in pond, I do it after work. So it is 8 p.m. and I know a lot of people don't necessarily prefer watering their plants at night. I honestly don't prefer it either just because there are less hours of light. Um, but anyhow, I kind of look like a mess right now. Like my hair looks funny. I have, I didn't shave. I've gotten a lot of questions about watering my plants in pond. So um, in the first like month, I rely on the slow re release fertilizer in the pond. And then I just water with plain old water. And from time to time, I use a diluted nutrient solution. I tend to put the water up to the middle point. And I have to be honest guys, the reservoirs are like really, really dry. And so, yeah, see, so completely dry. The roots are a little dry over here. I never like getting to this point just because once the roots dry up too much and then you rehydrate them, they'll rot and that's a whole situation. So I don't like to fill up the reservoir that much when it's in the state. I maybe put a little bit and then keep an eye out on it the next few days. This philodendron melnochrysum, I love her so much. Who would have thought? I have such bad luck with melnochrysums. And again, this was single node cuttings. She's doing a just a fine, look at this baby. And although this plant needs to be fertilized, I'm not gonna shock the plant by, you know, fertilizing it right now, just because I think it's going through enough stress as is. Another example is this Anthurium esmeraldens. Um, she is in a closed self-watering pot. So I have a lot of my plants in these pots and they do the job, but I don't prefer them just because you can't really take out um, the net pot and see what the reservoir looks like. You can't flush the pot. Um, so they do the job, but it's not like my favorite thing. Oh, there's nothing coming out. But yeah, same idea. This one is bone dry. So I just wanna put a little bit over here. And I don't know if you could see it bouncing, but that's pretty much how much I put. Then you have situations like these pots where you can remove it and kind of look to see what the reservoir looks like. Um, so I have a lot of my Hoyas in this pot. Um, this is my Hoya polynura, but you could tell just by folding the leaf it is very, very dehydrated. And usually, like I said before, I don't like, you know, when plants get to the stage, cause obviously you've dried it out too much. And that is confirmed, like I could go like this. I don't know what fail, but it was dusty. The roots over here, they're not looking too cute, but again, not a lot of water, just enough. Cause you don't want to, you know, drown the plant um, and promote like root rot. And yeah, so I'm just going to put you in the corner. I am listening to Adam, Nicole, and Becca's podcast called Pie Together. The new logo is so cute. And this one is about tips for collecting plants in 2022. And yeah, I just love their energy. Like they give me good energy and just, Honestly, my favorite parts are when they talk off topic, not about plants. I just think it's hilarious. So uh, I guess here we go. Okay guys, I guess that's it. The next video will be a January favorites. Oh my gosh, the first favorites video of the year. And I'm really excited. There's some good ones. I know y'all saw all my plants before, but there's some good ones, I promise you. I also plan to do a video looking back at previous videos I put out about propagating plants. And it's kind of going to be a year update. So there's the Anthurium Crystallina Magnificum hybrid. There's the Epipremnum Skeleton Key, Monstera Siltipacana. So yeah, that's another thing coming up in the future. And yeah, thank you guys so much for the support in the houseplant tour. 
um, I felt all the love and I, I, I love you guys so much. Okay, if you've made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.